everyone. Welcome back to the music chat. We've arrived to uh, the month of November and that means we're going to uh, just take a little bit of time and do um, some chats about some Thanksgiving hymns that we find have good histories. And so we're going to set the tone here with uh, verse one of our hymn that we're going to discuss today. Now thank we all our God. setting this up with that first beautiful uh, verse uh, with that very Thanksgiving text that we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, we'll just introduce the hymn here. Um, it, it was written in around 16, we think around 1636, by a gentleman uh, named Martin Rickert, uh, who was from Germany. And the music, the tune, uh, was written just a little bit later mm -hmm. uh, than the text by uh, a guy who lived just a little tiny bit later, just like a decade and a half later or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the music was written by a composer named Johann Kruger right. from Germany. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about what you found out about Martin Winkert. Well, it, it again was very surprising because we have ado adopted this hymn as a Thanksgiving hymn for, for that season. And when I found out more about Mr. Rinkart, um, and when this was written and why, why he wrote it, it's a very different story. Um, to put things into perspective, when Rinkart was alive, as well as Kruger, they're only a few years apart, it was about 100 years after the Reformation. Mm -hmm. They're in Germany, and um, they are in the midst of the Thirty Years' War. Right. And the Thirty Years' War was devastating to Germany. I mean, obviously, every war is devastating, but this just went on and on. And like, you know, we talked, it was this whole thing of uh, power with the Protestants and the, and the Catholics and all that kind of stuff. We won't really get into that. Yeah, just suffice to say, because it's, it's interesting to know that it's a religious war. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and it's our people, yeah. the Catholics and the Protestants yeah. that are involved in it. Right. So and that's kind of, but you know, kind of shocking in a way. It is, but it was also power, you know, right. like wanting the power. Yeah. But um, Brinkhart lived, uh, he, he was a person who, um, went to the University of Leipzig, I believe, mm -hmm. yeah, and he actually sang in the choir in Leipzig, and of course Leipzig, the church there is, the St. Thomas Church there is the one that was later where Bach was. Yeah, right. So, we're, you know, we've got good bones here, and yeah, uh, for sure. really with all of that. Um, and he worked his way kind of up from being a, a pastor to an archdeacon and bishop and whatever. And he ended up in an Eilenburg. And this was a city that was a walled city. And it, it served as a refugee kind of area. Um, and there were uh, like five clergy in this walled city. They, it was filled with... Um, pestilence really. I mean because of the 30 year, year war people did not have enough to eat. There were there were plagues. Mm -hmm. There was pestilence. People died. 
Um, he, I read where a third of the German population was wiped out that's in the right. 30 year war, either from war or disease. Disease or, and or starvation. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, this is where uh, uh, Rinkert was. Um, and it's uh, kind of devastating because um, he lost his life to this uh, situation. But what came across to me is that regardless of how much he personally had to eat or to give, he would always share it. And yeah. he was trying. And he had children himself. He, he was yeah. trying to clothe his own children and feed them, but he was one of the ones that stayed there. One of the some of the clergy left. Most of them died. So yeah. he was the only one left. Right. And he was still trying to minister to these people in this devastating uh, situation. Um, he was even kind of sent out on a, on to talk to, to the Swedes who were trying to take over. Yeah, at one point this, the Swedish army was yeah. not on the same side at right. the time, and so they had surrounded the city, and this is what they did. The armies would surround the cities, and, and then they would deprive them of food and right. you know, basic needs. Starve them out. It was horrible. Yeah, horrible. Yeah. Um, and he he actually went and uh, was sent out to try to to tell them not that they wanted a certain amount of money to release or whatever mm -hmm. and and he was sent out for that. Um, he uh, they, we think that he wrote the the words um, as a table blessing in the beginning, but then later on it it seems like when there was finally an end to the Thirty Years' War, which was the um, Peace of Westphalia. Yeah, and this would have been 1648. The, that's the, correct. The Thirty Years were 1618 to 1648. 1648, that's right. Mm -hmm. they, and they think that maybe the final version of, of, of this text came when the Thirty, Year War, 30 Years' War was over. Yeah, and he did write other poetry at the yes. time, and mm -hmm. they say it was greatly affected. How could it not be greatly affected by his life experience? Yeah, you know. And, and imagine spending pretty much your whole adult life in this circumstance. Dire cir circumstances. Yeah. They were saying that he often would bury and have uh, services for fifty people a day. Yeah, and it was something like almost. In the course of the time that he was there, there was almost 4,500 funerals, yeah. including his wife, of yeah, course. Yeah, right. You know? And so, to think that, first of all, he could just go from day to day. And, and do funeral after And funeral. do funeral and try yeah. to still be a minister mm -hmm. to the people is amazing to me. Right. And then that, that he would write this text, which we... I, I, in fact, I will just speak for myself. I've always associated with abundance. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. with, oh, we're, we're so thankful for the, our abundant blessings. Yeah, and here in America, you know, mm -hmm. we, we put abundance before us intentionally on Thanksgiving. That's right. You know? Yeah. And, um, and we sort of celebrate that. Right. And, um, you know, we all know there's a deeper meaning to Thanksgiving than just the abundance on the table. Of course. We all know that. But this is like beyond, yeah. beyond measure. Beyond I read you a quote that I found. Maybe you saw it too. Um, he, when he went to plead with the Swedish army the first mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. um, the Swedish army just really wouldn't have any. They, they, for he had some rapport with the Swedish army apparently because they respected that he was a pastor mm -hmm. and trying to do do well, I guess. Um, you know, but. It was to no avail, and, and what had happened was they were demanding this right. high ransom to, right. to release the refugees. Mm -hmm. And so he went back to the people, he said, <coughs> excuse me, come my children, we can find no hearing, no mercy with men, let us take refuge with God. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, I read and that so, as well. Yeah, and so, and, and actually the Swedish general was moved yep. to lower the That's ransom, right. and he had some success with mm -hmm. um, getting a little bit of uh, wiggle room for right. the people. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the text is 
to me just has such a different meaning knowing this. Yeah, history. so the stanzas, stanzas that the one you just sang mm -hmm. is a is a stanza that um, expresses abundant gratitude to a gracious God mm -hmm. who provides for us and blesses us. Um, it it, uh, it it tells us to be thankful with all of our being, our heart, mm -hmm. our hand, our voices. Um, so no matter what, you know, um, it's it, against the backdrop, in this case, of starvation and plague and invading armies, and uh -huh. um, we still look to God for our strength, you know. Well, they said that it kind of goes with Romans 12, 11, uh, when Paul asked us to give our whole bodies um, everything we have to praise God, mm -hmm. and that was his... Uh, the, it, the, the first one is is to praise God with your whole being and regardless of right. what's happening in worldly things, you know. So our second verse, um, I believe it's a, it's a little bit more um, personal, I guess, in a way. Um, it, it says, Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all harm in this world and the next. Mm -hmm. It's a petition. Yeah. It, and it's almost like the Lord's Prayer in a way. You know, it's that, right. um Give us this day our, our daily bread yeah. and, and allow us to be forgiving and so right. forth. Yeah. Keep us, guide us, uh -huh. free us. That's right. Yeah, it's a prayer. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. a prayer. Petition. And um, so, yeah, that's why I say it's a little more personal mm -hmm. uh, in a way. And then the third verse um, is they, they really Patri. refer to it as a doxology, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Gloria Patri. The Talks about the praise to the Father, Son, Son and, and Holy, Ghost. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Ta just referring to God's eternalness. Mm -hmm. And so that verse, all praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Him who reigns with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. That's right. That yeah. is the and the triune God is the it in that particular phrase. I think phrase. it's amazing when someone in that circumstance, I suspect he he was wise and he knew that even though this seemed like the longest of times, that in in God's longness and his eternity ness, yeah. <laughs> that this was a speck. This is a speck of time mm -hmm. and you know, while it's long, it's a long time if you're the one living, and don't we all feel like that? You know, sometimes we're working right. through things that seem so hard and so long, mm -hmm. and and really it is just a speck. Back in time. Yeah. Well, and I also wonder if after so many years it became the normal, and I think that happens with humans, that after so you adapt to the fact that this living with the, the starvation, with little food, living with people dying, it, unfortunately, I think it becomes... Yeah, and so then if you make it to the next day, then you're, that's, you're thankful. That's right. Imagine that. And the strength would have to come from God because everything is crumbling around you. Yeah. Really, you know? So... Um, it's what a bleak time. Uh, yes. I mean, to yeah. have these words come from such a bleak time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah that's what I was so yeah. surprised about, actually. Right. Um, and it makes, it humbles you. It does. That's, that's the thing that I felt first. I felt humble because we all go through trials and... They're hard on us because they're our trials. Mm -hmm. But, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. nothing like this. And it doesn't diminish what we experience. Not, not at all. all. Um, but it, it reminds us where the power really is. Right, and, and, and that um, everything's bigger than us. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. everything's bigger than us, way bigger. Yeah. So we hold on to that as, mm -hmm. with hope. 
really. Exactly. So then the text was written, and you know we think uh, we understand it was written for his own personal children mm -hmm. um, to kind of be a table blessing. Um, they speak of it as a song, but I don't know if it was just a poem at that yeah, time. Yeah, I, I never could quite get the connection yeah. where Kruger latched on to it. I don't it. know. I mean, Kruger lived, you know, same time period with the same circumstance. And, oh, you know, yeah. it's interesting because Kruger, Johann Kruger, um, 1598 to 1662 mm -hmm. were his dates. <coughs> um, so contemporary. He, he knew, he was actually for the Lutherans out there, Paul Gebhardt, um, he was friends mm -hmm. with him and uh, he wrote a lot of the hymn yep. texts that we still use today. Right, and and that's, yeah. you know, he was really a, a publisher of, right. of hymns, mm -hmm. and so perhaps it's like even our guys that we talked about in the 70s, you know, sitting around yeah. and saying, what are we going to put in this hymn? Right. And they were able to um, find this right. text. And he, he, like some of the other folks we talk about, was that's what he did. He mm -hmm. wasn't a text writer. He didn't yeah. do lyrics at all. He mm -hmm. was just the guy who wrote the tunes mm -hmm. to, like, a, for example, Paul Gebhardt Sims. And he got a hold of Now Think We All Are God at some, mm -hmm. at some point. That's we right. don't know how. Well, and they were um, all in the same area. Yeah, and... I mean, it, when you think Germany itself isn't huge, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, but interestingly, he also lived through the Thirty Year War. That's right. He also suffered from hunger. He lost five of his own children That's and right. his wife. wife nearly right. died himself from the plague. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then he remarried and had more children. It was and like lost 14, many of them. But um, you know, you think they have fourteen children, but maybe right. only four of them survived. Yeah, if that. Can so say, um, I, I mean, that's really humbling when yeah. you think about how much they had to overcome mm -hmm. and how the richness of um, music and literature and whatever from that time period and maybe it comes well, from that Well, don't you find it remarkable that there was any music and literature? Well, yeah, you yeah. Know? But, but, but often it does come from suffering. You're right. And uh, you know, it is a, a, an outlet for um, emotion. Right. And which we can carry on to a new time and still ex experience Yeah, amazing. It. Like, uh, he, you know, you still, even though there's a war, you still have a job and you still yeah. go to work every day. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's hard to imagine, but, you know, in his case, he, he did, he worked as a musician. That's right. And was, he was a teacher and uh, he, he got his musicianship through pri his own private study. That's right. And he wrote yeah. a lot of musical education kind of, he of did. things as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He also wrote, um, again, sort of for the Lutherans out there, he, in 1647, he edited and wrote many of the hymns and he, he uh, wrote the, the a very important German Lutheran hymnal uh -huh. that became the most important of the mm -hmm. 17th century. Mm -hmm. Um, so um, he was he was busy doing his hymn mm -hmm. thing, you know, in the midst of all the, all the chaos. All that, yeah. So uh, when he wrote the tune, um, you know, we were still heavily influenced by the Renaissance period, mm -hmm. and like we talked about with um, Martin Luther's "A Mighty Fortress Is Our God," mm -hmm. this has two melodies. Mm -hmm. um, the notes are. 90% the same. There are mm -hmm. some minor changes in what happened to the melody through the years, but the rhythm uh, changed a lot. And, and just like we have two mighty fortresses, we also have two and, now think we's. Yeah, <laughs> and it goes back to that Renaissance idea that so much of it came from dance. And mm -hmm. um, those dance rhythms were the first thing that we hear right. in this first. In, in this in this first version, uh, it it probably was just part of the the German folk music of the time, and they mention often that it's a pretty simple melody, and that also is is directly mm -hmm. related to the fact that it comes from that German folk music um, genre, I think. But it it was it was yeah. pretty pretty uh, dancey. In Very much. Life Mighty Fortress. We yeah. talked about that a few chats ago. And so um, I came across um, an old manuscript of, of Now Think We All Are Aragon. And I got to looking at it and got kind of fascinated with it. 
of course it has shape notes mm -hmm. and you know um, that and for those of you who don't know what shape notes are you know the four bar lines to organize our music in four four time and three four time and this kind of thing um, and there were no ties for you those of you who know what ties are uh, it's a rhythmic device that helps you hold notes over um, and in this time period, everything was notated in what the symbols that they had in that time period. Mm -hmm. And because the rhythms were so intricate in this dance period, the Renaissance being mm -hmm. sort of a dance period, the rhythms were very, very intricate. Um, parts weaved in and out of each other mm -hmm. in a very fun and dance-like way. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, this manuscript sort of reflects that, but it's very hard to read, you know, for someone from the 21st <laughs> yeah. century. Yeah. So I got to kind of, you know, I had to figure out the note names because they use a different clef than we use now. And, and uh, of course, the rhythms are um, through the shape that, you know, you have a, a certain kind of shape note and then you hold it a certain length of time depending on the shape of the note. Mm -hmm. Like it could be a diamond or a square. Or, you know, a circle or whatever, you know, so, um, <laughs> know. And, and, and also key signatures <laughs> were it's around, so, um, yeah. you it's know, they, they had to sort yeah. of indicate, you know, accidentals and things and, and their own ways of doing that, so um, I, I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure it out because uh, they, they, they don't even um, use, like, we have like if we have a soprano and another part singing they're over top of each other mm -hmm. and sometimes these are side by side okay. instead of like <laughs> underneath each other so it's kind of a, a crazy adventure trying to figure it out and yeah musicologists they sit and that's what they that's do what they all do, day, is they take these old manuscripts and try to figure them out so anyway i was going to attempt to um give some idea of how this um, would have sounded back then, and what what this manuscript was, which is two parts. It was the now think we melody that you just sang, mm -hmm. uh, accompanied by a bass. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a bass line that was given as to go against that melodic. Well, line. and they said that Kruger was one of the first persons to do like a figured um, bass and yeah, and so stuff. figure bass. Even though it's one line, it gives you more information right. about. What but you could improvise yeah. above mm -hmm. it, so I'm not even going there. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, I actually had to notate it a little bit for myself um, in our mm -hmm. our kind of notation after I got it figured out, and uh, we'll see if I can uh, do it uh, here. It's kind of a, a tricky thing to get the parts that we. Renaissance feel. It does. And yeah. then, you know, Bach took that melody and put it in some chorales, and then Mendelssohn took it and... He, uh, Mendelssohn's credited with the uh, uh, harmonization. harmonization that we're more familiar and with. And I think that's how it evolved to mm -hmm. become what, what we know more today. Now, it's been arranged, like we talked last week uh, with uh, When in Our Music, mm -hmm. God's Glorified. Now, I think We All Are God has been anthem arranged for choir. Yeah many times and will be many more times. And maybe we ought to talk about uh, Catherine Winkworth because oh, yeah. the reason, uh, she is this real interesting woman and she lived, she was English and she lived 1827 to 1878. So 18, you know, we're talking quite a, a while after. While after. And so probably the Germans were, you know, enjoying this for a long time. 
And um, she was able to give us the uh, translation from the German. And once she was able to do that, um, it became a hymn that was more sung, obviously, in England. And um, probably that's how we were able to mm -hmm. um, grasp onto it. And it was used for, uh, it's used in many different, for many different reasons. In fact, they used it for Queen Victoria's um, Diamond Jubilee. Yeah, it almost became like a patriotic uh -huh. um, usage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, it's because of her translating it. Yeah. And she was honored in the Diamond Jubilee because of that. She's, mm -hmm. you know, because she was a an English woman that um, championed that whole thing. Mm -hmm. So that was another link in being able to get it from Germany to us. Well, I think we can say that we all have lots to be thankful for, and this is just a reminder. And, mm -hmm. and uh, as you go through the next few weeks and we sing these hymns in our church services, um, I, I think it's uh, time to reflect a little bit about, you know, um, the large scheme of things. And um, it's, it's, it's almost, like you said, it's just so humbling, humbling. to sing it, mm -hmm. to know where it came from. And as you said, as we think about Thanksgiving and think about this hymn when it was written, and it, it hopefully evokes in us an attitude of gratitude for all the many, many, many things that we are blessed with every single day. Amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. So. So we're going to be back next week with another uh, Thanksgiving hymn and probably for the next two weeks mm -hmm. before we actually celebrate it. Um, it's just an opportunity to uh, do these more joyful hymns uh, for a few weeks. And so we will see you next time on the Music Chat. Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.